So we've got the leader pack, which adds uh, basically this entire leader sort of tree that you can have leaders on missions, and they've got certain perks that they give to people around them, and you can upgrade the Gorilla Tech score to give it to them. Um, you've got the Mutant Centurion Alien, which is basically another alien that comes along in the mid to late game, which is a Mutant Centurion. It's basically a, a mutant with some like special powers. Uh, the SMG pack. The SMG pack adds another, basically it's like an assault rifle type thing. Uh, anyone who can use an assault rifle can have it, but it's an SMG, so it's light uh, slightly shorter range, um, less damage, less ammo, but has better aim at close range and gives you like a mobility buff. And they've got timer tweaks, which adds um, four turns to all the missions. And whoop, there we go. Let's go back to it. Um, and two for UFO missions. So, because I'm going to be having a larger squad and more aliens, it might take longer. I will be tweaking this if I need to, to make it less than four turns if need be. But uh, for now, I want to start off with Time of Tweaks, which is a set four turns and two extra turns on UFO missions. And we'll see if that's okay. Uh, I don't want to be making it too easy, so I will n sort of nerf that if need be later on. New countries, because why not? Some countries get left out. Um, what else we got? No star movies, because obviously, evac all. Um, great mod allows you to evacuate everyone from the vac zone at one point rather than having to go around all of them and click the buttons individually. Um, uh, Captain Bub's accessories pack. Captain Bub's accessory pack is amazing. I thoroughly recommend it. Loads of new headwear, including things like berets, etc. Really, really good. Uh, ink and paint. Um, some new tattoos and face paints. Larger starting squad. Uh, basically allows you to start with six and upgradable to eight with uh, squad size upgrades. Um, this is going to be really cool because I'm liking like the ability to have a slightly larger squad, and we'll of course you know we'll make it fair by giving the aliens more aliens and stuff. But it should be kind of fun to be able to take more people on a mission. Starship troopers tattoo because awesome. Um, military camouflage patterns, 19 real life camouflage patterns. Um, custom face paints, we get 10 additional face paints. Uh, character pool uniforms, basically allows me to type someone's name into the character pool as uniform last name and then it will draw them for everyone in theory it doesn't exactly work but it should work close enough listen empire tattoo because everybody needs a tattoo of the listen empire i thoroughly recommend this mod i'm not biased at all full character customization from the start basically i can edit someone whenever i want rather than having to wait until an arbitrary level at which point they're allowed sunglasses or whatever the hell it is um, stop wasting my time, increases movement speed by about 20 percent and takes away all the arbitrary little pauses in between actions so good. So good. It's so good. Get it. Um, truly retroactive Advanced Warfare Center. I'm not going to go into details, but because of the way the Advanced Warfare Center works, it doesn't sometimes give perks to people it should give perks to. Uh, so this basically allows it to do that. Mass Effect Jack's um, appearance. It gives two hairstyles, um, two tattoos, two earring options, and was that face paint? And one face paint, yeah. Oh! It's expanded. It only used to do uh, tattoos. Awesome. Overwatch all. Ability to overwatch everybody at once. It's amazing. Uh, always shot show breakdown. So this will always show you why your aim is so much. Um, wound recalibration means that the wound should be fairer. So you won't get someone who's like lightly wounded being out for longer than someone who's wounded. Um, it doesn't like skew them one way or another. It just makes the range smaller. So it's still exactly the same difficulty. Just the range for your wound modifiers will be smaller. Um... Rifles for all classes. So it does what it says on the tin. Every class can use a rifle as their main weapon. It's useful in some niche cases, and if you've got like a gunslinger sniper and you don't want them to carry a sniper around, it's useful for them. Um, really, really helpful. I like it. I mean, it makes sense anyway. And plus it allows people to have the SMG, because the SMG is based off the rifle class. So, you know, your sniper can have an SMG, which I think is a great idea, because it's going to synergize really well with a mod that I'm working on, which I don't have at the moment, but it's okay. We'll go into that in the end. Displayed hit chance for or all abilities. Basically allows you to see what your Overwatch hit chance is and stuff. And I find it interesting. Stop, drop, and roll means that you can take like a hunker down action, which allows you to effectively put out fire, which I like. But, you know, kind of easy to turn, but whatever. Uh, edges, mir uh, mirror, edge, face, mirrors, edge, faith, tattoo. There we go. Why is that so hard to say? Um, yeah, more tattoos. Patrol when revealed means that pods, when you set up like an ambush and they walk into you, don't just stop and then stay still, they will continue their patrol. Grenades Unlimited, no, I haven't got that on. Um, custom bandanas, yep. Um, load from character pool, allows me to load from character pool if there's someone in the character pool with the same name as someone loaded in the game. Uh, expanded call signs, awesome. 
Uh, enemy loot, expanded loot, basically allows dead corpses to drop um, PCSs and weapon mods and a little bit of alloy and a little bit of supplies occasionally, very occasionally. This is useful in the early game when you're a little bit starved. Gives it a little bit of a buff early on. Um, improved AI. This makes the game harder and it's sensible. Um, it does a, a lot of little tweaks here and there. I and mean, then stuff like, for instance, the sectoids will often just raise zombies even we've got, when they've got a flank shot. With the improved AI mod, they're much more likely to shoot you, and they're less likely to raise zombies and more likely to use things like Mind Spin, which are annoying, and to be fair, they probably should do more. Uh, improved camera allows you to move the camera 45 degree increments rather than 90 degree increments. Um, fixed dead eye aim penalty. So the dead eye aim penalty in the main game is minus 25 anytime you take a dead eye shot, which means it's really bad until the late game, at which point it's not terrible. Um, because, frankly, minus 25 in the early game, you've got a 70% shot. It's like, oh, now it's a 45%. Eh? No. Just no. So this takes it down to minus 10%, which is means that you probably won't take it every time. I've tweaked this personally. It's not hard to do. To make it a minus 15. Just to make it not always a great option. Uh, but yeah, so I've gone from minus 15 with the mod. The mod actually does a minus 10, so I've tweaked that. Um, stun Lancer Rebalance. I might take this one off. I'm debating it. But for the moment, we're going to leave it on. Stun Lancer Rebalance basically means Stun Lancers have a quarter less health. And slightly less like to do the crazy like stun knockout things I think um, the main reason for this is I feel that stun lancers are often uh, oh god oh god oh god they need to die when in the late game they should start to fade into obscurity they need to, it's maybe a personal preference and I'm, I'm testing it out I'm not sure about this one but stun lancers often feel like a super dangerous enemy even you know mid and late game when in fact they should be you know they're human they're not meant to be, you know, they're, they're meant to be a light unit that runs up to you and tries to hit you. I don't want them to be a tough unit, which they fairly, fairly sensibly are. Um, so yeah, I'm going to adjust that. We may get rid of this mod entirely, I'm not certain. I'd like to hear thoughts on this one. Medkits are limited, really niche circumstance, but I can now carry two medkits on a person. That's what it does. Um, would I really want to do that? Probably not, but I like the option to do it. It doesn't really make the game unbalanced, particularly, but it, longer missions, I guess it makes sense. Then we just get into a, a few um, more interesting things like the AK-12 Assault Rifle. It's a new model of the Assault Rifle. Basically, you've got an option of the Assault Rifle or this Assault Rifle. They're exactly the same stats. It's just nice to get a bit of variety going on. Maybe a bit more realistic weapons for modern age or whatever. Increased enemy squad size. There we go. We're increasing enemy squad size to match our squads. Um, subtle sword tweaks. Basically means the sword is like a tiny bit more accurate. The stun sword does a tiny bit more stun. The fusion sword does a tiny bit more damage or whatever it is. Basically means the, the swords actually keep pace with the game and are not terrible, which in the base game they are. M249, light machine gun. Basically an alternative light machine gun for the beginning of the game. So instead of having that Gatling cannon you hold at hip level, which I find a bit eh, um, you actually have basically a light machine gun that you shoulder, which is great. Um, then there's the he uh, Hecklen Croc uh, 416 assault rifle, which is another assault rifle replacement. Um, sign engineer to scientist. Basically, the Advanced Warfare Center... Uh, which is, you know, also a med bay, and the psionics training lab, which, you know, psionics are staffed by engineers. And this really bugs me, because, like, what well, engineers, what do they have to do with, you know, getting people well? I mean, scientists, you know, still not quite there, but closer. Um, same for psionics. So this allows you to place scientists in them instead of engineers, which is great, because scientists are really just, oh, I got a scientist, excellent, another passive buff to my research rate, and ignore forevermore. Um, I really like this just because it allows you to be like, yeah, scientists have a slight purpose. Um, and also, it makes sense. An upgrade reminder. Basically, if you haven't given someone a PCS or full weapon mods, this will give a little indicator in the squad scene that you should probably do something with them. And the Ever Vigilant Pistol Fix, which allows you to use the perk Ever Vigilant with a sniper so that they can use that to overwatch with their pistol if they double move. Um, it happens if you happen to roll an Advanced Warfare Center perk of Ever Vigilant on a sniper. I mean, it's a niche case, but it's nice to have the fix. It'll probably be fixed in a patch at some point, but for now, that fixes it. And that's all our mods. Now, the one thing I will say is I'm experimenting with a heavy, heavy pistol mod. The thing is that the pistols in the game don't really keep up with the main weapons. Um, weapons go plus two damage, plus two damage as they go up tech levels. So they go, you know, four, six, eight. Well, actually, they go five, seven, nine, or whatever, depending on what you're talking about. But um, that's that's the case. They go up two, and then up two again. So they go, you know, up two, up four. Um, whereas the pistols in the game go up one, up two, 
which means that the pistols are suddenly doing, you know, two less equivalent damage than they would have been at the start of the game, which means that gunslingers don't scale well. Now, gunslingers are okay in the lower difficulties, but in the higher difficulties, gunslingers just don't compete. They just can't do enough, you know, damage to make them worthwhile. Um, so I will be making a heavy pistol model. In fact, I've got a load of stuff for it now. I'm just having some issues. Um, and the heavy pistol mod is designed to be, right, you take a mobility loss, but you get a better pistol. The way that you can trade off is you give them a SMG as their main weapon, which gives them a mobility buff. So you've literally gone, ah, throw the sniper rifle away, I'll have an SMG, ooh, I get mobility, and I'll take the heavy pistol. Oh, I lose mobility, but still, I probably get a net gain in mobility, so I can use my pistol. Just, you know, lose all the sniper rifle perks. Which is fine, because you're definitely going gunslinger. I just think that's a good option. Now, of course, you can put a heavy pistol on a sniper if you want, you just, they're going to be incredibly slow. Um... So that's one we go for. It's a it's basically a decision to go right. I'm I'm definitely going gunslinger. I'm losing the sniper side of it, but at least I can do the sni the gunslinger thing better rather than in the end game kind of falling off. So I'm playing around with that at the moment, and hopefully I'll be able to add that. Um, hopefully be able to balance it out a little bit as well. I don't want to make I I see a lot of mods on the workshop which are very much tweaked to be oh this is really good. But the problem is people are like oh, I want people to use my mods, so I will make it really good. And then it's a case of oh it's just doesn't even fit the game. So I'm trying to avoid that situation at the moment. It's a very niche case of you want a gunslinger and don't want the sniper rifle whatsoever. But uh, yeah, that'll be coming later. So I will shout out any mods as I add them or change them. Um, so, you know, there will be mods added. There will be mods changed as we go. I won't list a mod link down below for like the mods or whatever. If people want to do one of those on Reddit or whatever, go ahead and do it. Um, but if you want to just point people to the mods, this episode it serves as a mod talk. And as I go, I will mention if I change a mod on camera or whatever. Um, the other thing I have changed is, in addition to the things like the Dead Eye perk, I've changed the number of rookies we have at the start from 10 to 16 to um, basically show the fact that we're starting with a bigger squad. So I'd like more rookies at the start, really. We're going to chop through them pretty damn quick. So there's that. I've changed from 10 to 16 rookies at the start. And in addition, I've changed the disorientate uh, negative aim from minus 20 to minus 30. Part of the reason for that is if I throw a flashbang, I'd like it to actually do something to enemy aim, where currently it really doesn't at the moment. I mean, it's minus 20, but still, that's not a lot. I want flashbangs to be an actual viable tactical option for, you know, actually using outside of, oh, there's a codex. That's just my personal taste. I might see if that needs tweaking or anything. Uh, maybe tweak some of the other values for it. But uh, one of the things I do want to make is, you know, actually viable for taking down enemy aim a little bit. Anyway, but I've been Entralysium. This is just episode 00. Very little going on right now. I Me mean, just talking about the mods because people are going to be like, oh, what mods are you running? And I'll be like, these mods. As I say, I will take mods out and put mods in as we go along. Um... You can see that from what I've got here, there's nothing game-changing. There isn't anything like new classes or whatever, because that gets... I think the classes are fairly well balanced as they are. Um, I just want a couple of tweaks here and there, and I, I want the large squad, more aliens, and uh, a couple of things like that. So nothing crazy major. I still think, since we're still getting to know the game, I don't want to go for anything big and life-changing. I just want to, you know, get to know her a little bit better, take the game out for, a, you know, a drink... Um, you know, before going back to my place and uh, modding the hell out of it. So we're just going to mod, well, quite a lot of things, but they're, they're mostly minor tweaks here and there, and, you know, some new weapon models or whatever. But I've been Enter Elysium, and this has been the modding episode. Yes, I guess you just talked about modding for all of 15 minutes. Um, if you like, like, you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. This episode's really here just so people can go, Oh, what mods are you using? Oh, what are you using? And everyone in the comments can go, Did you watch episode zero? No! Go watch episode zero, because I can say it enough, but people don't pay attention. Anyway, until next time, stay shiny.